Okay. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, my name is Jian. I work for Yahoo, and uh, I'd like to uh, present uh, our work on uh, pacing for uh, online ad campaign optimization. This work is done uh, collaboratively uh, with my uh, colleague from both the research and engineering team. So uh, this is the uh, agenda. So I will talk about the, uh, the background and then uh, describe our smart pacing algorithm and models, and then uh, uh, show some results on both the real ad campaigns and uh, the synthetic simulations. And uh, at last, I will, uh, I will talk about a little bit about the system implementation. Okay. So budget pacing. So um, budget pacing, it helps the advertisers to define and execute how their budget is spent over the time. So why budget pacing is important? From the advertiser's point of view, they would like to reach a wider range of users. And also, they would like to build some uh, synergy with other uh, marketing campaigns they are running together within the same time period on other channels, for example, on magazines, on radios, on TVs. Okay, from the system point of view, um, budget pacing can help to avoid uh, premature campaign stop, to avoid overspending, to avoid uh, spending fluctuations. So uh, these two figures are uh, two uh, typical examples how advertisers would like their budget to be spent. So this one is even pacing, so the advertiser basically would like the budget to be spent evenly over the time. And this is a kind of a traffic-based pacing. So the advertiser would like to spend more when the traffic is high and spend less when the traffic is low. Okay. So there are two streams of strategies to implement pacing. So one is uh, to directly modify the bid price. So that when the bid price is modified, the bid win rate will be uh, influenced so that the budget spending can be controlled. Another stream is to use uh, probability to decide whether to bid on the uh, ad request. Or uh, in other words, you can think of uh, the ad request can have a probability to be skipped by the ad campaign. Okay. So uh, this probability is also called pacing rate or throttling rate. So uh, these two figures uh, shows um, what factors in the RTB environment are included, are involved in the uh, pacing control. So this is uh, for bit modification. This is for uh, probabilistic uh, throttling. So uh, I don't want to go into the details of the, all these factors because of the time limit. But I want to mention that uh, the probabilistic uh, throttling, it involves uh, less factors in the RTB environment to implement uh, budget pacing. And it also has some uh, other advantages over the bit modification. Uh, so our work will follow this stream of strategy. Okay. So uh, let's take a look uh, at what the advertiser would like to have uh, in online advertising. So first of all, they would like to reach the uh, delivery and the performance goals. For branding campaigns, they would like to spend out the budget to reach an extensive audience. And meanwhile, they would like to make the performance as good as possible. Here, performance. Uh, one measurement is the ECPC or ECPA, which is the effective cost per click or effective cost per action. Okay. So for performance campaigns, the top priority is to meet the performance goal. Right? And meanwhile, to spend as much budget as possible. Okay. So the second major uh, objective of the campaign is to execute the budget pacing plan, as we just described. The third one is to reduce the creative serving cost. So the creative serving cost is charged by typically the third party creative uh, serving provider. Okay, so uh, they, they usually uh, charge that kind of cost on a per impression basis. So if you, can, uh, uh, if you can meet all the other campaign objectives uh, with less impressions, then the creative serving cost can be reduced, can be minimized. Okay, so our question here is that uh, can we achieve all these campaign optimization objectives using pacing control, using a very smart pacing control? So this is our motivation. Okay. So before we uh, formally define the problem, we classify all the campaigns into two major categories. One is that those campaigns without specific performance goals, especially those branding campaigns. 
another category of campaigns are those with specific campaign goals, uh, campaign performance goals. Okay. So for those uh, uh, campaigns without specific performance goals, the smart pacing problem is defined as determining the value of i. Here i is the pacing rate of ad request i. Okay. So determine the values of i so that the performance is optimized. So uh, here minimum, because uh, we use ECPC or ECPA as the performance measurement, so we minimize that, that uh, measurement. Subject two, we spend out the budget. And the budget spending pattern is not deviated from the uh, budget pacing plan too much. Okay, this is a definition of problem one. So the problem of smart pacing for ad campaigns with specific campaign performance goal is defined as determining the value of the pacing rate of each ad request so that we want to minimize the deviation from the pacing plan. Subject to the campaign performance meet the performance goal and the total budget we spent is not deviating too much from the uh, budget. Okay. So these are the uh, problem set up. Uh, so our uh, observation is that to directly solving for I is very difficult because uh, there are huge amount of ad requests every second. Right? So it is also computationally expensive. So uh, we made some key observations on the prevalent uh, campaign setups. For the CPM campaigns, for those branding campaign, uh, their priority is to optimize the performance as long as the budget can be spent and the budget uh, spending pattern is aligned with the plan. Okay, so in this case, they will prefer high responding ad requests. For performance ad campaigns, it is obvious that the high responding ad requests will be preferred. Okay, so for CPC and CPA campaigns, they actually have implicit performance goals because the DSP don't want to lose money. Okay. So if the response prediction is perfect, then creative serving cost will become a concern. Okay. So in this case, if we can uh, achieve the campaign goal with less impressions, then um, things will be better. So in this case, we will also prefer high responding ad requests. For DCPM, D means uh, dynamic. Dynamic CPM campaigns, they usually have very explicit performance goals. So uh, if the prediction is perfect, uh, the same with uh, CPC and CPA campaigns, uh, we will still uh, prefer high responding ad requests. So based on these uh, observations, uh, we designed our model and algorithms to tackle with the problems defined in previous slides. Okay. So first, we learned from offline serving log a response prediction model to predict the response rate of an ad request in terms of an ad, ad campaign. Okay. And then, we reduce the solution space by grouping similarly responding ad requests together into, into several groups. Okay. So the ad requests within the same group will share the same group pacing rate. And then in the uh, ad serving time in the online environment, we develop a control-based method to learn from real-time um, feedback of the uh, online uh, delivery data and then to dynamically adjust the group pacing rate to approximate the optimal solution of the previous problem. Okay, so I think a picture is a worth a sound of words. So, so basically, um, the first thing we do is to use a prediction model to predict the response probability of each ad request. And then within each time slot, we rank all the ad requests based on the predictor uh, response rate, okay, and then we group them into different layers. So the idea is that uh, different layers should have separate pacing rate. So for those layers with high responding rate at request, they should have a higher pacing rate than those layers with low responding at request. Right? And when you do adjustment, when you would like to, for example, uh, slow down the pace, for example here, you would like to slow down the pace, um, you adjust, you actually decrease the pacing rate in a layer by layer fashion 
from the bottom layers because the bottom layer have, has the lowest responding rate. Okay. And when you would like to speed up the spending, speed up the pace, you actually increase the pacing rate from the top layers. Okay. This is an example for the uh, increase the pacing. Okay, so here are some uh, re results uh, from our real campaigns on our DSP system. So uh, we set up this uh, kind of uh, online blind A-B test with 50, 50, half and half traffic and budget split. And the baseline is the probabilistic throttling with a global pacing rate, which is equivalent to there is only one layer in our approach. Right. So we implement our, our approach with eight layers of ad request groups. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this uh, green and the uh, red lines are the uh, spending pattern over the time of uh, the baseline and our approach. You can see that uh, they both did a good job to smoothly spend out the budget. Right? And the difference is that uh, the ECPC of our approach is much lower, much, much lower than the baseline. So uh, yeah, here the pacing plan is the even pacing. So you can see the spending pattern is aligned with the even pacing, very good. Um, so similar things can be observed in other real ad campaigns. Okay. So uh, I think I will skip all uh, these details. So, yeah, these are the results from the synthetic data set. Uh, but the, actually the traffic, uh, from the real ad campaign, but uh, we do some uh, kind of simulation to, to plot these, uh, these uh, uh, figures. Yeah. So we, we'd like to further investigate the performance of our, of our approach. So I will skip the details of this, and if you are interested, please feel free to refer to our paper. Okay. So this is a comparison with the state of the art uh, prior work. Uh, developed by Agua and uh, his colleagues in 2014. It is, it is also published in KDD 2014. Yeah, so their approach, actually, they use a conventional controller, and they do not consider performance at all. And our approach, we use an adaptive controller, and we uh, actually consider the performance. We would like to optimize the campaign performance. Right? So uh, as you can see, um, both our approaches and uh, their approach can align with the uh, accumulative uh, spending plan. Very good. But actually, uh, if you look at the campaign performance, our ECPC is way lower than their ECPC. Right? So the campaign performance can be much better than using their approach. Okay. So another interesting thing is that if you uh, zoom in, and if you look at the actual accumulative spending pattern, uh, you can see that they actually have uh, fluctuations around the accumulative spending curve. Yeah, so basically, because we are using an adaptive controller, so uh, uh, the spending curve of our algorithm will be much smoother than theirs. Okay. So uh, I will uh, take some time to talk about the implementation. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, besides the common implementation and considerations of a large-scale online ad serving system, uh, for, for the implementation of the smart pacing methodology we introduced here, we focused on two components. One is that uh, we, we need a real-time feedback of layered statistics. Right? So uh, we use a message queue to rapidly uh, accumulate and deliver, me uh, deliver messages to the control server and uh, we use remote uh, procedure call to propagate the updated pacing rates and uh, quick stop commands to the serving boxes. Okay, so another component is an in-memory data source. So uh, we use snapshot plus message queue to avoid the data loss uh, when there is system failure, and we use aggregation to reduce memory usage. So if you look at this, uh, this figure, uh, these are the in, uh, impression serving boxes. It sends, it pushes all the um, delivery information of the ad campaigns through distributed measures queue and uh, populates them into the in-memory data source. 
the controller will refer to the in-memory data source and to collect the real-time spending data, real-time delivery data, and do the uh, pacing rate layer, the pacing rate adjustment, and then propagate that kind of uh, adjustment result to all the bidders. Okay, so these are the uh, references. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. You finished perfectly on time. So we have actually time for questions. Mm -hmm. I can start with a little warming up question, actually. What do you do with the, I mean, if, if your um, uh, controller performs so well, it means that the spending is always on the budget. Right. Uh, it is it meets the budget. It actually spend out the budget. Yeah, me, me, uh, meets the budget, follows yeah. the budget, or actually it mm. saves o on the budget. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do with the rest of the budget? Sorry. What do you do with the rest of the budget? The rest of the budget. Um, what is the strategy? Okay. So so in real applications, actually, uh, the budget is not for one day only. We have, for example, two weeks or even uh, several months of budget, and if we. Uh, uh, we do not spend the budget in this day, we can spend more in the next day. Okay. Yeah, so overall, it will be okay. Okay. So, if we have a um, um, goal of to com control the ECPC, mm -hmm. such, such kind of metrics to mm -hmm. uh, predefine the target, mm -hmm. do you think the budget pacing and pacing techniques can be useful here? Uh, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, I think I actually skipped that, that part here. So um, you mean uh, if we have a very strict uh, ECPC goal and uh, if, we, uh, if we spend the budget, maybe, maybe we can never achieve that goal, right? So uh, in this case, um, uh, for these campaigns with very strict uh, ECPC performance goal, we will not spend uh, out the budget. So here. If you look at it here, so the budget spending will have a low point here because there is uh, too little traffic in these uh, time slots, and we cannot guarantee performance from <coughs> this uh, traffic. So basically, we will spend less here. Yeah. Okay, I think we uh, we are done with the time slot. So mm -hmm. thank. You.